And here we go. And this is Flash at In a Perfect World on the 14th of April, 2020. My God, how did we get this far without grown-ups around to help us? And uh think I get got this thing done right tonight here, Grim. Give me a Hail Mary on the RLM chat. Am I coming through in perfect perfection? For the perfect people in a perfect world. <laughs> okay. He's given me the all's good. So we've got on the RLM chat for your uh, bantering and philosophizing. Hmm. Got Barman and Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Chalcedony, Circulo. She's of course, she's knitting, crocheting. Mm-hmm. Damn, Van Meter, duh, me, frumpy work, Rob works. I think Rob's working on his coil. I don't think he's paying attention tonight. And we got Rome's and Trust Number One, Vanna White, W4DKV, a anti. Uh, we got Weather Dork and Phantom, Asmo 2CC66 Chess. Garano, Cyborg Noodle, E-Man, Ensive, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Honsa, Sock Puppet, Smart Ass, uh, The Holiest, Roger, and Zepix. Those are your sparring partners in the uh, Ireland chat. If you want to get into a good argument about who owns the color blue, I recommend chat room. That is where all the activity with personality really shines. People's opinions about shit. And boy, have we had the mother of all scams put upon our table as of late. Ladies and the gentlemen out there in the real liberty media dot com. <laughs> now, the reason that I have this opinion tonight. <clears throat> Is earlier today, Cirque's working on the phone. So, eh, I'm going to go out, go downtown, and make a little wander, get out of the house for a bit. And I wandered into my uh, younger buddies. And everybody's doing their grocery shopping. And none of us are wearing masks, and none of us are wearing gloves. Now, Two of the people in the grocery store in the time I'm running around with these two guys were. And we came to the collective decision that, you know, if somebody feels ill and they're threatened by us being out here, could get them sick. Okay, that's cool, you know. But that kind of lets us know who the crazy ones are because this is a very extreme situation to put yourself in in a society when most of the people know it's not real. So, hmm, maybe most is a, a optimistic point you know, perspective to have, but when you see so little uh, <clears throat> political push politics, you know, that gloves and staying separate and all that crap, people were... So, an older couple walking arm in arm towards the grocery tonight or earlier today and then uh people here and there were paired up talking about whatever they were talking about. So slowly it's not been overnight, but it's been just gradually every time I go into town, I can see the the bullshit relaxing and people are getting back to normal. Whatever state of normal they're from. And I hear all this crap. Oh, it'll never be the same as it was. Well, that's if you don't want it to. Because, you know, of course, according to history, we've been through this flu shit many times. So, why this is so different is, uh, I guess that's a matter of your your indoctrination. You, know, if you support the machine or the agents and authority the machine thinks it's got. Then, sure, I could... I could see promoting this shit to make yourself feel uh, special. (laughs) 
because, you know, you're such a fragile, endangered little cupcake on this planet. Now, I come from a whole other time of life or something because uh, we grew up, getting dirty was part of growing up. You fall down and you cut yourself or you bandage it up or you don't. That's up to you. But it wasn't like if you didn't, your arm was going to fall off. You might have an ugly scar, but we didn't grow up with all this uh, antibacterial scrub. You know, that way, if there is something in the fucking air to catch, you'll clear off all the bacteria that you got that's there for the purpose of keeping you alive. Let's scrub all that shit and wash down the toilet, you know, get rid of it. So I come from the opposite of this biological fucking nightmare that we're (laughs) supposed to be living in right now. I don't know. I hear story, you know, I read on the internet how bad things are everywhere but where I'm at. Even Copenhagen's been, um, uh, seen its work, it's seen some bad shit happening as a result of this. What I call a, a hoax. I don't believe this is being presented to us in the proper way. It's being exaggerated. And we're being lied to about numbers, and this and that, the other, just like always. It's a different story. So, uh, I guess I got a link for you guys that are out there. My Hardcore 24 over at uh, BitChute. And then we got some hostages over here at the Real Liberty Media today. And I think I'm going to introduce a nice link about the present situation. What would that be? Hmm. Let's ponder for just a moment. Clank. Got it on there. Let's see. It's called, folks and folkettes. Get to the top here. It's called Brutal Opinion. The road to perdition is paved with evil intentions. (laughs) And this is by Patriot Rising, April 13th, 2020. So, they've, they've got a mouthful of good shit to say about this uh, hmm, this thing that we're not doing right now, you know, that's what it is. It's like this uh, this dance, and some people are doing the dance, and other people they're not doing the dance. And the weird part about it is nobody's making a big deal about it. They just want you to pick a side. You know, either you want to wear the freaking mask and the gloves, or you don't. And if you don't, that's okay. Don't do it. And I think they've got the fucking part figured out that if you're not wearing the gloves and the mask, you're not afraid of anything. So, wow, what are you going to do to me? Give me a flu? I think I've survived those all my life. I'm flu. People need to do a little bit more uh, reading into uh, just normal fucking shit that we grew up with. I, I don't get it. I don't think that the uh, the people in the RLM crowd so to speak. They've got to be our age. You know, me and Graham, Ron, you know, we're all about five years. We're within five years of each other. So, you know, that age group right in there. And we all grew up pretty much the same way in the States. City or country, it was pretty much, you you grew up playing with the go-karts and mini bikes and bicycles and mechanical shit. And if you didn't, kind of a strange one. (laughs) And I grew up in the city, and that's the way I was raised. Everybody rode a motorcycle or a go-kart or a mini bike or something. Yeah. Grimm says, cower in a corner, Flash. That'll make them happy. Yeah, you know what? I guess to be more specific, when uh, I was out talking to the guys, they live in a non-smoking building. They can't smoke inside their house. It's really uh, states up their ass, up to their eyeballs. But, it's you know, the young kids renting from the states, some kind of special deal, so it's cheaper than living alone. So they, they sacrifice a little freedom for the, you know, comfort of a big place to live in. And But they can't smoke in there. So I ran into them. Hey, you want to go smoke one? So we're sitting there doing our thing and it's a little bit of wind going on so we have to be a little bit 
creative so the stuff that we're doing doesn't blow all over the world and end up making us unhappy. And through this, one of the fellows says, well, what if somebody, you know, doesn't like us doing this? And the other guy says, well, what are they going to do about it? And they're, te- they're speaking in English at this point so that I'm not left out of the conversation at all. And we're just, three of us just figure, well, you know, there's really not doing anything to anybody. And and even if they did call, what are they going to say? Oh, there's some, some guy smoking this, what looks like a split. Now, that wasn't even a threat to these guys that are Danish. They live here. This is how they're taking it. So I'm going to go with the consensus. And here I am on the radio. Nothing came of it. We didn't do anything outrageous. We just, two of us out of three smoked split, and then we parted ways. But the conversation about uh, how life is right now with this lockdown, and it's it's not uh, mandatory here. It's personal. You will, Either you want it or you don't. And the, the only thing that we, we could uh, really find that was annoying is that they shut down the, the social places, restaurants, and bars. So you can't socialize anymore right now. Now, I've been reading and listening to radio on RLM, and it seems like the uh, Americans are going to take this a lot further. The Danes are already bored of it. They want the shit back. They're tired of playing around. You know, there's not enough people dropping dead that people can see to keep the illusion alive. So, hmm, yeah. It might work in a big place where there's, you know, 80 million or 100 million, 300 million people. But small country of six, that's, now there's even singular states that are breaking free of this crap right now while I'm talking. But divide and conquer was what they've been using on us ever since I can remember. So this one, boy, this is the best divide and conquer I ever saw. I wish I'm just jealous I didn't think of this. I'd be sitting here looking down at all my little pests, wondering which ones I was going to get rid of first, because I own all of you. <laughs> and that's the way this damn, it looks like a, like a power grab disguised as a virus, because what they're telling you that to be afraid of doesn't, doesn't exist in the physical world, unless you're ill. So, hmm... Let us ponder. Anyway, so I'm going to get on with my story. And it starts out with a little block here. It says, <clears throat> suckers think that you cure greed with money. Addiction with substances. Expert problems with experts. Banking with bankers. Economics with economists. And debt crisis with debt spending. The bed of Proskrusties, <laughs> philosophical and practical. Wow, I shouldn't read foreign languages. Uh, it's right there on the link. You guys can do that. I'll do the little reading guide, the small words. Now, as we continue our national lockdown suicide cult to hell, I find myself getting angrier and angrier at the pathetic leadership displayed by politicians. Government bureaucrats, so-called medical experts, and intellectual yet idiotic academics displaying their ignorance of facts, reality, history, and humanity. My nature is to be skeptical of everything I am, I read or am told. Hmm, I could have wrote this. Wouldn't have been any better, but the same idea. I got the same crazy notion. Hmm. To continue, I most certainly disregard everything communicated to me by politicians, world leaders, central banks, corporate CEOs, CNBC talking heads, the mainstream corporate fake news media. Hey, he's jumping on your clap there, Mr. Grimner. Uh, and lately, self-proclaimed medical experts, 
who have distinguished themselves by not seeing the danger coming, downplaying the danger, not being prepared for the danger, incompetently handling the danger, and righteously proclaiming the nation had to be brought to a full stop because their terribly flawed model said so. Now, apparently, this is going along with what I understand is happening as far as the physical world. You know, the emotional, let's tell them what they want to hear so that they don't, you know, panic and all jump out windows at the same time. But it's pretty bad. It's called a financial collapse. You'll find, you'll, you'll see. We'll, we'll get to that in later shows on the uh, In a Perfect World podcast. But, uh, how I see it. Now, today it's a pandemic, and pandemics all responsible for the problems, but I have a feeling, <laughs> if you do a little digging, you'll find out the companies that are dying, they were in debt to these banks, could never get out from under it. It was too, so far in, it was too you know, done. Like the national debt, like that, <laughs> what is that, 20, 20 or trillion dollar national debt. So when you think about what the interest per year on that is, and it just goes up every year, you're not paying anything to anything. You're just keeping the Rothschilds in, you know, the shit that they like while you work. And it really is that sad, simple, to be honest with you. I think this, uh, this little, Lockdown shit's proving, <laughs> it's proving who the important people in the reality truly are. But it's it's not here yet because the, the food processors are being shut down. And there's no explanation for why they're doing this. They just have been reporting that, ah, meat has been discontinued. Blah, blah, blah. No more No more meat sales. What? These vegetables, these fruits are just going to be left and nobody's going to sell them. No market for them. What? (laughs) Well, I don't hear a lot of people resisting whatever decisions the government make. And then when you do see people do something, they go with, like I watched a link earlier today about them uh, protesting up in Ohio. That'd be in the north if you're down in Lurida or Arizona. But a couple of hundred people got together and did say, hey, you know, I want my rights, whatever the fuck that means now. I don't think it means anything anymore. I don't think anybody anywhere, if you live in this freaking game, we don't have any rights. We're dodging this or we're dodging that, avoiding things, putting bills off juggling stuff or some kind of crap you gotta you gotta do to balance this fucking over uh reaching society because it's so deep embedded in us you know can't live without it hmm. now me i could alone but i'm not alone so see the makings of the trap i mean at least i know they're there i'm not blind to the whole thing but i was like I was uh, telling my buddy earlier today, can you imagine what my life would be like if, if Cirque didn't know who owned the house? And they went, oh, good God, yeah. And, you know, and then I get to, well, and then you know how Danish women are. <clears throat> and, of course, Danish men do think their women are special. So there's a way to play off that word. It's true, <laughs> but if you're not one of... uh that group, you're not really going to know what they're talking about. It's going to sound like a cliche, I suppose. And that's what, um, hmm. I guess that's what watching all this shit all these years. I've been here six years. And through all the downside I'm reading about on the internet, when I go out in public, people wave at me and I see faces and they go, hey, see other people, they don't want to know me, they go by. You know, we've got that freedom and people are here are free enough to be open or closed or whatever the fuck they are. They just do it. So I'm not as uh, 
bombarded by the physical reality of this crap, this hoax thing that we're living in. And then when I read things like the link I was on tonight, it's just so few people out of the collective really... Hmm. I'll give you another example. I got a neighbor down the road. I found out today, I've run into the guy for years, but I found out today he works in the hospital. And so does his wife. She works in administration. But he is a nurse, hands-on nurse. And he, he did make a point of saying he's not working in the, uh, the corona department, whatever the health department that is. He's just working on everybody else, whatever that is. And then my neighbor next door tells me that the, there's nobody at the hospital. <laughs> so, But he's at a bigger hospital in the next city over. So there, there might be a little bit of body traffic there. But this guy is out walking, and I've never seen him walk. He usually drives his truck. And I asked him, well, what's with walking? And he speaks English, too, on top of this whole thing. But he says, well, I wanted to get a little, little exercise, so I took a walk to the store today. And, you know, wow, little things like that, that when people don't have to walk, they choose to, see? I think that the smaller town thing this, that I live in is far removed from all that big city thinking that I came from. So, you know, the slower pace and people being more calm and Willing to talk for a minute makes a big difference when I'm reading about all this waste and destruction and shutdowns. And keep your fucking distance and all this horse shit. And people here are just, you know, treat me like they always have. In fact, I got an even better one for you. The uh, Romanian guy that's down at the train, you know, down at the store that I go to. He disappeared for just a few days right after this corona crap started to take off. And I thought the worst. I went, oh, man, the poor guy had to go back home or something. I just, But I seen him a couple of days pass by and I seen him. Anyway, I ran into him today. And we don't speak to each other. We do more of this sign language kind of a makeup thing. And he beckons me to come to him, so I do, and he hands me 20 kroner in coin, or 10 kroner in coin, and he shows me his beer can. He wants another beer. He says, will you go? Will you go? <laughs> so I did. I go hump the beer, look for it, figure out which, where it is, because I never bought it. Didn't know where they keep it in the store. It was like an excursion. And then I got the beer and brought it to the guy and gave it to him. And that was like... My little contribution to, to him. Yeah. He never asked me for anything. But he asked me to do that. So I kind of thought, well, he trusts me. That's kind of cool. You know, to have the guy that's dependent on everybody, dependent on you for something. Hmm. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, doing little things like that for other people, I think is why... You know, the end of my days are so comfortable compared to so many other folk. Um, I get treated really good for, a, for an old geezer, you know, American in a, in a foreign country during a lockdown. And I get to sit with a couple of kids and, and listen to them tell me that this is all a bunch of bullshit. You know, can't wait to get beyond it and get to the other side. This is ridiculous. So, you know, for people in, in, in the States that don't know what it's like in Denmark. I wouldn't say the whole country is like that. I'm saying that where I live is like that. And the people that I encounter in my day are like me. And I don't know how I don't know how that worked out, but <laughs> it's happened. So go back to the little story. I got all nostalgic about my little Danish life through this meltdown called Corona. And uh hmm. I can't see a reason to buy into it if this doesn't benefit me to give in Bill Gates, please. That leaves very few people to trust. I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a political expert. I'm not a religious expert. I'm not a medical expert. But I do know how to think critically and question the basis of every narrative being spun in the world today. 
Uh, it's a little bit much, but okay. I get the point. Uh, I'm not that good. All right, where was I? I do trust the intentions and intelligence of a number of clear-eyed, truthful writers, <laughs> thinkers, investors, commentators, and bloggers. That include, okay, and he goes on to name people. I probably don't know. I'm going to skip all that. Go on to the next paragraph where I'll understand what the hell I'm reading. Because I have a simple mind like that. Hey, duh. What's duh, dude? My wife was told to drink more water. Almost killed her. Ended up in ICU for a week. Well, how much water did she drink? Wow. I hope you're not telling a terrible joke. Because sometimes you tell bad jokes. But, yeah, you can overdose on any any object or thing or whatever you use and overdo anything. You know, even weed, but I believe that at some point, your body just goes to sleep. Okay, enough weed for a while. Good night. And then there you go. Now, there's people that mix their weed with other things. I don't think that's the same thing. You know, that's like hitting somebody with a baseball bat <clears throat> and saying they got shot with a gun. No, it's not. It's two different things. You know, they both end the same kind of, but hey. And that's how I feel I'm being treated with all this corona shit, you know, because it's a it's a flu or it's a component word in this legal definition of some kind of flu. And this is all comes down to legal bullshit. That's how they're fucking with us. Anyway, so <sighs> There's no test. Um, there's a half a dozen other people on RLM that agree with that. So it's not that far-fetched of an idea. But it's not the popular choice right now. Oh, people want to believe so much. There's a test you can take. You know, get your COVID-19 test and get a 95 and boom, you're out the door. They don't work that way because they're lying to us. <sighs> So frustrating. Anyway, where was I? Hmm. I lost my place. Go figure a thing like that. Um, this is where it gets challenging. Chris Mortensen and John Hussman both warned about the seriousness of this coronavirus before anyone began to take it seriously. In early February, when virtually no one was paying attention, they have supported the measures taken by the government to stop the spread of the virus, while many others have condemned the dictatorial implementation of this national lockdown. Wow, it is. It's a violation of your rights as a human being, period. Somebody else. I don't care what they're damn well. Uh, I'm 60, duh, but uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not so convinced just because you tell me something that it's true. I gotta have, I mean, I've been around a while, so, you know, I have to have something to compare your story to, to make it valid or not valid, one or the other. Very rarely do I ever get stuck middle of the road hanging out. I don't know, I can't make up my mind. Except for the big things, like, is the world round? I don't know, could be. I can't prove it is, but I can't prove it isn't. But I don't know what to believe, because I've heard all these stories. and People have gone out of their way to do the damnedest things, like pretend to go to the moon. So, I have a very uh, skeptical outlook on society as a whole. Because everything is based on bullshit. The financial system, the legal system, uh, the Everything. Social Security. Look what they did to that. Jeez, it was a pay-in system, and they sucked it all out. <laughs> and they gave it all away to their buddies. And now, what? I don't even know. There's no money coming in to explain the money going out because they're in debt. And here we go with that. I've I've been listening to the people. Oh, jobs. I remember when Trump came back, came into the office. Jobs will be back in six months, and blah, 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 blah. You know, the funny thing is, 
there's a handful of people that knew something was going to come, you know. And I think the most of us figured it would be a financial crisis. That was obvious all along. We had the 2008. It's been 12 years, crying out loud. they got to come up with something. But, you know, to be so diabolical to disguise a financial crisis as a, a medical crisis that could get everybody when it, it can't. This is nonsense. 2% is not everybody, people. 2% if it was... Uh, Wow, I can't see any reason to bet against yourself when 98% of the people survive. Let's go bet against it. It's dumb. I, I do not understand. So, I'll go back to reading. Because all this, uh, trying to be logical through an emotional, girly bit thinking time isn't my, it's not where I'm strong. I don't know. Uh, what I, what, I would just tell people, I did tell Sir before I went out yesterday or something, I told her kind of in passing, I hope I don't run into anybody and have to tell them what I really think about this because I'll tell them what I think. And, of course, the people that I run into that it comes up, well, yeah, I did because they, <laughs> but not because we agree, but I'm lucky they, they agree or it could have ended up with, you know, disagreement because if, you ask somebody a question, you know, they're kind of obligated in a sense to answer it under, under certain, you know, social circumstances. So, fortunately for me, water does seek its own level, after all. And uh, let's see, where was I? I will just start at the top of the paragraph. I do not understand the either or nature of the debate. Coronavirus, a.k.a. China flu is a nasty, highly contagious virus that has impacted the entire world. Maybe, maybe not. The Chinese covered up the nature and extent of the virus, resulting in a worldwide pandemic. Well, that's what they want you to think, anyhow. And it, it's working on a few people. Uh, despite allocating billions to the CDC... <laughs> there you go. CDC over the decades... They, they prove to be incompetent, unprepared, and to make up for their disastrous failures, they terrified the nation into a complete national shutdown with their apocalyptic death models, which are proving to have overestimated deaths by a factor of 500%. Wow, hey, stat people, circle and Grimner, is that... Is that a lot when you overestimate something by 500%? I know what the numbers mean, but I mean, in, to, if you did numbers regularly, would that be all that big of a surprise, or is that just like a normal exaggeration, 500%? Because I don't really know a lot about how that stuff is really weighed out. I'm just reading these high numbers and going, holy shit, 500% more? Well, what if that's... You know, like a, a tricky way of writing it. So it seems like it's huge, but it ain't. Or is it really huge and I just don't know it? <laughs> what a world, you know, because uh, I guess you can make whatever you want out of this shit. I sure as hell try to. I'm going to enjoy this uh, coronavirus one way or another way. Now, I'm not too pleased about the... Uh, being told I can't use certain businesses. I do like to make that decision all by myself. But here we are, the 14th of April, 2020. And my biggest problem with this whole corona crap thing is the bars have yet to open again. And that's still, uh, it's more because I want to be decide if I can go in or not. <laughs> not, not because I can't, because... Wow, because I don't want to do something. It's very egotistical to think like this, but this is why I do it. You may not think like I think. I would hope you don't. It's not a, I'm never on the popular side of this story. Anyway, back to the story, but I was wondering, I think it's grimming around. Or maybe Kate would know. Kate knows numbers, right? Kate, is that 500%? Here, let me go back to the story. It says, uh, 
which are proving to have overestimated deaths by a factor of 500%. But, see, I don't, there, there you are, Grim. Is that factor of 500%, is that so astronomical that it's going, they're going, they're making a good point about these numbers are skewed? Or is, I don't know who the 500 number is supposed to impress or why. Because I, I don't believe in all this crap in the first place. So I'm more confused than usual. You know how I am with numbers. But I'm more confused than usual because since it started, I've seen it drastically, you know, de-escalate where I'm at. But not on the bigger, the bigger city things. Those things seem to be pretty... Uh, Oh, pretty convinced it's the end of the world and you better kiss your grandma goodbye. We're all going to die and all this horse shit. And I'm seeing the relaxing coming already. So, I don't know, 500, but a factor of 500%. Ooh, sounds so intimidating. But models and CDC, there you go. Anyway, back to this crazy old story. I don't know, Grim. It's hard for me to do a, a solo show than it is when I got Miss Mary or, or Rob Works and Larry to interrupt and yak with. This is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit weird sometimes. I hit the pipe and try to read a little bit more all that, but uh, I hit this one spot of the thing of the story and it just started to make me more uh, dizzy with the questions. You know, oh man, what does this number even mean? You know, just because I'm reading a number and I know what 500% more is, how does this really apply to the what they're talking about? You know, and and I think that that's the cornerstone of my disappointment with this calling this a hoax is so much of the stuff they're throwing at me. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know, well they died with the corona, so we're going to call it a corona death. But they were hit by a truck at 80 miles an hour, so that may have had something to do with it. But no, no, no. We get paid money for putting an X in this box. And, you, and if you read and you look, you, you'll find anything to suit any taste on the Internet. It's incredible. So I'm kind of at a, la at like a loss for who to believe about what at this point. So hmm, not really... Not that detail, just the details of it all. Not not so much the, the, the hoax is still the hoax. But some of these things that we're reading about it are true. So it makes you sound like a nutcase if you're against it because, well, it does exist. Well, yeah, but not like that. So <laughs> it's got to be looking on to this from a, Status perspective must be insane. These poor people. Anyway, to make matters worse, they blatantly lied to the American people that wearing face masks would not protect them in any way. That lie has resulted in thousands of additional deaths. But we still tout the advice of those proven liars. Media mouthpieces for the party use New York City and northern New Jersey as their illustration of what is happening everywhere. And, well, when, that is a complete lie. See, the way this is written, too, is so hard to really follow because it seems to cover both sides of the street the way I'm reading it. So I don't know what how you're hearing it, but I'm hearing it as though they both believe and disbelieve at the same time. Well, I, I buy this part, but not that part. So, uh, wait a minute. Uh, it's like picking commandments or, you know, rights out of the, the Bill of Rights. You got a package. Either you go with all of them or you don't go with any of them. Now, me, I choose to not go with any of that shit. I'm not too crazy about uh, the idea. <laughs> People with guns telling telling you what to do. That just rocks me. From, and I've had it happen, so I know. I know from experience. You give these pricks a reason, they'll draw down on you, like, you know, that's what they do. Now, we're living in this weird time where there's a lot more people yakking than there is enforcement. 
So, <laughs> and the yakking that I get isn't from the, it's not from my immediate surrounding. It's just all from the internet. <laughs> I'm so amused. I, I, I read about laws, you know, that have come to Denmark because in, in a year they're going to do this. <laughs> No, they're not. <laughs> but see, it keeps it keeps the money flowing, so the people that run this place can stay on good terms with the people that run your place. And we get stuck in the middle, you know, looking like a bunch of sheep doing this little sheep thing. <laughs> and, and some people do, and some people don't. But you get reported to the other sheep, you know, like the other sheep in other countries are gonna. Hear about how the how the sheep here are behaving, <clears throat> like fucking has anything to do with them. But this is how we do it, right? So I'm sitting here in Denmark, and, and I hear how the sheep in China and how and the sheep in America, Germany, France, how those sheep are all acting. And then I go to town and I look around, and I don't see anybody doing none of the shit in person that I read about on the internet. <laughs> So, I somebody's full of poop somewhere. I I don't think it's me. It could be me though. I could be, um, you know, telling you how wonderful it is. You know, it's not. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd do. <laughs> nah, folks out there in Radio Land, our own land. I think if it sucked, I'd be I'd be telling you all about it. I'd be the first one complaining. But. I don't have anything to complain about. So, wow, listening to listen to the shows I've been doing lately must be a real drag. Uh, uh, wow. Anyway, I guess I'll read some more of this. I don't know what to call this. It's just a little a little propaganda, a little truth, all thrown into one one story, so that you know you can be on either side. Pick a side. There's only two. <laughs> You can be a denier, like being a climate denier. Re remember when being a climate denier was the worst fucking thing you could do? And how insulting you were because you wouldn't take the seriousness of the Earth's demise just around the fucking corner, right over there. Don't look. Wait, wait. It's coming. And bleep, the I can still smell Greta's fucking tires burning when they took her to a halt. Screech! Hey, let's get this kid off this thing. We're going to replace her. And, what, two months' time, they got coronavirus. Ooh. Now you're all going to die? The coronavirus. Two percent of you. What part of you can't Understand 2% is like, that's a very small margin of loss. You know, if you have a hunt, maybe the smarter people just can't do the simpler math or something. If you have a 100 pennies and you lose two pennies, you don't go to the jump off the bridge because you lost two pennies. You put the 98 in your pocket and go on with life. But what we've got is a world full of dummies that seem to think, wait a minute, I lost two pennies. I better stop everything and go find them. But you throw them in the ocean. Well, they're out there somewhere, by God, and I'm going to stop every fucking thing until I get to the ocean and find my two pennies. Well, I guess it makes sense to some folk to uh, disrupt and fuck everybody up all at one time. Because 2% of the people are going to die. Well, they don't seem to have that kind of concern for people with heart problems or mm, cancer. <laughs> ah, I think more people are going to commit suicide in, in the year to come than are going to die of this flu. But, hey, let's shut the whole fucking world down because... 2% of them are going to die of a flu. And there are people truly convinced that this relates to them somehow. They're so selfish and special 
that they're in this 2%. Now, I thought, well, remember when we were, were making fun of the 1% that own all the money? Well, here we got 2% that own every fucking thing because these fucking sissies might get a flu and die. Ooh! I might, uh, well, I said it before, I'll say it again. You might get hit by a fucking bus. But then I guess this hoax did kind of wipe that all out, too. Nobody's traveling. This is ridiculous. I've never... I'm at the end of my rope. Good thing I'm almost done with the show. But, yeah, at the end of my rope with the the, uh, the fear-mongering, the pussies that are afraid. You know, wow, what... I didn't... Uh, I just don't understand it. Maybe I'm just from a different time <laughs> or planet. <laughs> Ah, does says people are watching the news. Oh my, yeah, stuck at home getting brain damaged by the fear porn. So yeah, me and Cirque don't do that. Uh, that kind of television, we'll watch like movies or Netflix crap or something. But we know what we're looking at going into it. So I think we're uh, we're in that weird minority of, of uh, conspiracy theorists. Who think that the government has something sneaky up their sleeve. And I said this on Saturday. I'm going to say it again. I am so totally impressed on how quickly the uh, retail establishments in Denmark, in the middle of a government shutdown, managed to get their little stickers all put on, on the floor. They were printed, they were designed and printed and installed in days, weeks maybe. Let's even say weeks. And, you know, when you try to do something like that in business in weeks, you know what happens? You get disappointed and people delay and put off. And, hey, I can't get that done by then. What are you, nuts? But here we are with this coronavirus and the first time that government is actually not only on time, but they're ahead. They're, they're moving at a pace that you, the consumer, have to keep up with. Well, okay, well, try that when you want something from them and see how long it takes and compare it and go, hmm, weren't they just a, a little too prepared for all this? I mean, to coordinate different stores and get everybody on the same page at the same time and stickers on the ground and this far apart, and on and on and on. What and what beyond controlling us does does it really do? You know, so that you'll be a, a obedient little slave when you do new commerce. But you can walk in the place dressed in a freaking Batman costume. <laughs> and, and that's normal now. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, I should post it on the links. I saw a uh, Walmart shoppers of the COVID crisis or something. <laughs> oh my God! People, <laughs> they're uh, they're amusing. I mean, <laughs> snorkels. I seen a guy in an aqua lung. I don't think he was wearing flippers, but he, he had the body rubber on. I. The links. Now, are these comedians out there having a good laugh at society? You know, by being the fool out in society, you don't know. I don't know. I, I would just assume that they're taking this all serious and they want to protect themselves from the evil virus. Well, what if they're mocking this thing just like I do? <laughs> and I'm just not intelligent enough to get their you know, little sarcasm. Or... You got the other side. I try to be fair. But <laughs> it would be funny if they were laughing at us for laughing at them. Because, uh, wow, how how television-minded you must have to be to fall for something this well-organized and perfectly executed by government. These idiots are the ones that got, we're in debt, remember? <laughs> Why? Because all these idiot governments use a central fucking bank. But they don't know that. This is I've heard everything. People will tell me, well, the, the people in government don't understand how banking works. Well, you kind of would hope they did. <laughs> they're, 
they're writing us into debt more and more every minute. You see that they got this debt clock on the internet. If you have, if you've never seen the debt clock, you know, put it in your browser. Debt clock, and it'll give you a thing. You click it. <laughs> oh man, there's the debt for everything. There's a debt for debt. But what it doesn't tell you is who is the debt owed to. But it's All right, folks, at this point uh, in the show, uh, Flash had an equipment failure, and uh, so he was not able to finish out his normal program, which is why I'm on here giving you this little message. So he'll be back again next week on the Perfect World, In a Perfect World. He'll also be here on Thursday uh, with Rob Works and Larry Woods. Uh, so be sure to check that out in on Saturday on the Dark Table. Thank you all for tuning in to In a Perfect World with Slash Somebody here on RLM Radio. Have a great time. Bye.